Hello guys, welcome back to another lesson with Rivera Fine Art Studios. Today I want to go over a technique using pastel and charcoal in a still life. So you can see that my darts are really dark. Um, and again, that was achieved with my, uh, my 4B charcoal pencil. So I just really am kind of bearing down to push those. Um, and that is very important for me to get that contrast. Even as I start adding the color, I'm going to be able to relate my color uh, in the lighter areas to my darker areas. So um, the darks are very, very important. You know, the values to me are really what I look at the most in the early stages. To me, this is a fairly cool red. It has, um, it has the influence of a little bit of violet in it. And the alizarin crimson is a red, which is already has uh, some, some violet in it. It's considered a cool red versus something like uh, the carmine, which is much warmer. You can see the difference. Lizard crimson is also darker. Lizard and crimson there is on the bottom. The carmine is above that. So I'm not gonna probably go for too many of the really intense reds just yet, because I wanna build this up slowly. And I want to get those subtle, subtle shifts in my hues. You can always adjust values still in this layer. So if your values aren't perfectly accurate, uh, you don't have to worry because you can still make adjustments. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the side of my pencil um, and it's actually going down pretty nice. It doesn't seem to be picking up the, the charcoal. And I'm just gonna kind of put a layer of this over pretty much the whole thing. So I'm gonna warm this up a little bit because um, the red is still warmer than the gray. It's, it's influencing the gray. It's giving the gray uh, just a tiny hint of warmth. But what we notice here, uh, and this is the other thing to pay attention to is how, how much of this I'm putting down I'm really not going with a heavy layer. This is very um, transparent. So I'm allowing the gray to influence this. This way I'm not gonna obliterate everything that I've done in my previous layer. I'm keeping those grays, letting them show through. And essentially just creating another layer on top of what I've already done. Now I can kind of come into this area and look at this. And so I'm taking the side of my pastel and I'm laying it down as a stronger red. And I'm putting it down pretty opaquely but now here's where it's gonna be nice having just that little bit of that cool red underneath. Cause in certain places, I feel like I'm gonna, I can like even in the transition, as I start transitioning this way, I can maybe let a little bit more of that cool come through. Um, so I can just sort of pick and choose uh, where I want that coolness to show up, that cooler red. But for, for the most part, this area is really pretty, pretty uh, strong, strong red right here. So I can cover a lot of this. Um, and I'll very often do this in multiple layers. Like I'll kind of do this and you, you see when you brush over it, it, it does lighten the, the red a little to kind of takes away that some of that red. It's picking it up. But what I can do is get a softer gradation as I move into my half tone. So I'm not coming necessarily all the way into my shadow. I'm covering up a tiny bit of that green that we had put down before, but it's transparent enough that I can still see the influence of the green. And now what I'm gonna do is strengthen my red again. So I'm gonna go with pastel um, and I'm just gonna pretty much look for my most vibrant red that I can find. 
So something like this, this is really a red, red, very intense, um, a little bit warmer than what I currently have there. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna come back and add this. And you can see right away, there's a difference. Like that's much more intense, a bit warmer, higher in chroma. So just like with, um, you know, with this technique, as I said, this is kind of similar to how I might do a, a painting in, in the same manner. The idea is you're really saving those super intense colors for the final layer because you want those to sit on top. You want those to really be uh, very strong, very dominant. And, uh, you know, I can do a little, like as I come, as I come down, start moving into my half tone, <clears throat> I can lighten the pressure. Um, and that gives that a little bit of that optical color effect. So you're starting to see that what's underneath starts to reflect through. And you can create a transition that way. And I can even bring that down a little bit into my, my brown that I just added, just to make that transition a little softer. But uh, let me start with the orange and then add the yellow on top. So now that this is sprayed, I'm thinking as I lay this down, it's really not gonna blend with the gray too much. At least that's my hope. So I'll get more pure color. And there's a lot of uh, broken color in here too. Like this is something that I, I know I've talked with some of you about in the previous color concepts class. Um, and what that means simply is that there's all these little fractions of, of color, there's little um, specks and uh, variations. It's not a solid thing. And that, that really has a lot to do with the fact that it's, you know, the skin of this pomegranate has a lot of variation in it. So this orange, I can kind of come through and sort of find places here and there to add specks. And in some cases, it's gonna blend with the red and give me another variation, which is, is sort of a nice effect. So now I'm gonna come back with my brush, just clean up some of these edges a little bit. Doing a, actually using a small brush now for this. So if I needed to tone these down a little bit more, I could do that with uh, the brush. And at this point, it almost feels like painting, which is kind of cool. I feel like I can really sort of manipulate this stuff pretty, pretty nicely with the little brushes. This is a number, this is a zero actually, round. And there's really not a lot of pressure, like it's pushing around the, the powder that's on the surface. It's not, it's not really uh, lifting it that much. Could also use the eraser here and there. Like this was a little bit of a fat band, so I can just clean that up. 